think the gentleman, uh, in, the, in the last question from the gentleman from the district, uh, you talked about growth in cases you're dealing with, and you attribute that to what exactly? Oh, this year we have a 5% growth so far, and I, we're seeing that from the filing season, people not being able to get through on the phones and coming to so us. So that's because they're, they're, they're not getting answers to the question. That's right, or they're and not is, getting is, their, is, their returns and Maybe processed. I missed this earlier. Is that a, is that a trend? Uh, the 5% is, is a trend, yeah. So it was 5% bigger than last year, and last year was 5% bigger than the previous year? Um, let's see. Last The previous year it dropped from the year before, 2013 to 2014. It dropped a so bit. It dropped, so it's not a trend. Yeah, it's not a trend. It's actually reversing the trend. Okay, so the trend was coming down. and this It is was coming up. down for about two years. All yes. right, and, and it's, in your professional judgment, that's, that's because of, of, of financial concerns. It is the taxpayer service issues and would bring financial concerns. Might it also, I'm just going to hazard a hypothesis, might, might it also be the complexity of the tax code? The tax code uh, continues to get more, more and more complex. Maybe we need a new one. I, would, I, uh, would we do? Yeah, I, I have made the complexity of the code a number one most serious problem for several years. Okay. And, and, and you, that's based on your professional judgment and the people working your professional judgment that it's a financial uh, uh, cause. Uh, but also in your professional judgment, it could be because of the complexity, ever-increasing complexity of the code. Absolutely. And you've not had an outside study done to, to, to say which is bigger what, what have, or have you? <laughs> that's hard. But I okay. can give, just looking at my cases, for example, one year we had a huge bump in our cases solely attributable to the first-time homebuyer credit because it was a complex credit and we got 40,000 cases in one year. I would, I would think that's, you, you know, the, the biggest, biggest concern is you got a code that's, you know, that big. Of course, there's going to be questions. That's why we need to reform the tax code. Um, in your opening statement, or, or early on in the hearing, you mentioned uh, critical pay authority. Can you define what that is exactly? Um, that is a special hiring authority where the IRS is able to bring people from the private sector and pay them above the general pay scale based on on their skills, and it's a limited authority. They're able to come in for four years, but it's a way to bring the best and you know the brightest from the private and sector. What has happened to that authority? Uh, it's called critical pay. No, no. What has happened? Is it expired? Uh, it has expired. And you, you, and Mr. Koskinen would like that to be back in place. I think yes, yes. And it would where, be where, so, so just to be clear, this is the authority to pay people at a higher level, higher wage, higher salary than what they're entitled to under the federal pay scale. Yes, that's correct. And where do these people typically work? Um, they would work often in our IT function. Um, that's what it was really originally intended for, was the information yeah. technology. And, and you know the difficulty we have as policymakers with that, right? Uh, would you explain that to me? I'm, well, I mean, I mean the, the same, the same I, so you had critical pay authority um, for all this time, and we had this whole escapade with and these are in the IT people, the tech people, of losing Lois Learner's emails, uh, finding out you had lost them, not the IRS not telling, not you, but Mr. Koskin waiting two months to tell us they had lost them. Then once they inform us that they lost them, the Inspector General two weeks after were informed that they're lost and that Mr. Koskin has assured us that they cannot be recovered, that the backup tapes have been destroyed. Two weeks after that, the Inspector General drives to Martinsburg, West Virginia, and gets the backup tapes, and lo and behold, we found them. And so all these IT people that you need critical pay authority to pay didn't do a very good job in that situation, which has been the most high-profile situation at the Internal Revenue Service over the last two years. And now you're asking, and Mr. Koskinen is asking to pay these people more than anyone else in the federal pay scale makes uh, and give you this critical pay authority. I think that's going to be really difficult. I, I can only say that it would ben it is my belief that it would benefit the IRS to bring people, be able to bring people from the private sector in to help us learn more about innovation and those sorts of things. And to get those people in, it's very hard to match the salaries that they're able to make on the outside. And that's the purpose of critical pay. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm respectfully uh, have a slightly different opinion. I thank the chairman for his indulgence.